Hi, my name is Justin Prevost, and welcome back to my YouTube channel of Marxist slash Radical Readings. If you could, please hit that like and or subscribe button. I'd greatly appreciate that, as I will have more audiobooks in the future. And with that out of the way, let's get started. Jalil Muntakim on the Black Liberation Army. Freedom, Unity, Struggle, Black Liberation Army. The Black Liberation Army is a, politi is a politico-military organization whose primary objective is is to fight for the independence and self-determination of African people. Jalil Abdul Muntakim, parentheses Anthony Bottom, on parentheses, has been held captive as a political prisoner in United States prisons since 1971 and is one of the longest-held political prisoners in the world. He is a former member of the Black Panther Party and its offspring, the Black Liberation Army, an urban guerrilla organization that operated during the 1970s. Samizdat. Noun. The clandestine copying and distribution of literature banned by the state. Anti-copyright. Copy and distribute freely. All power to the people. Samizdat is an, is an imprint of Last Word Press and the Olympia Zine Library. For more information, please contact us at lastwordpress at gmail.com or visit us at www.lastwordpress.com. Introduction. This pamphlet offers insight on the history and lessons of the Black Liberation Movement being waged in North America. Since the original writing, the struggle has declined due to U.S. political repression and political inf infantilism on the part of U.S. revolutionaries. What is extremely important to understand about the former Black Panther Party BPP, is that it was basically a militant youth movement because the BPP was a powerful youth movement. J. Edgar Hoover, former director of the FBI, declared the BPP to be the greatest threat to the internal security of the United States. The FBI launched a political and military counterintelligence program, uh, parentheses, COI, N-T-E-L-P-R-O, on parentheses, to destroy not only the BPP, but to also crush any possibility of a new youth movement of similar magnitude and militancy. Today, our youth are being crushed by increasing uh, dracon uh, draconian laws and the saturation of poor communities with CIA-procured drugs. The music industry continues to produce and distribute nihilistic gangsta rap that glorifies drive-by shootings and gang bang and gang banging. The U.S. government is lowering the age a teenager can be tried and sentenced as an adult from 16 to 14 years old. The U.S. government has constantly withdrawn money from social and educational programs while at the same time increased spending for prison buildings. These are direct attacks on our youth to prohibit the rebuilding of a movement that in any way resembles the militant determination of the former Black Panther Party or the Black Liberation Army, BLA. This pamphlet comprises a chapter from a soon-to-be-published compilation of my prison writings, the book we Are Our Own Liberators, presents specific ideas, theoretical determinations, and political positions on how we should work to rebuild and continue the struggle. The proceeds from this pamphlet will help offset the cost to produce the book. Therefore, it is anticipated all will support not only the distribution of this pamphlet, but more importantly, the rebuilding of our movement. Reset assured, our youth, I'm sorry, rest, rest assured, our youth and the struggle for class and national liberation, having learned the lessons of the past, will recover and triumph. Remember, quote, truth crushed to the earth will rise again, unquote. Jalil A. Muntakim, August 1997. On the Black Liberation Army. Quote, 
Hide nothing from the masses of our people. Tell no lies. Expose lies whenever they are told. Mask no difficulties, mistakes, failures. Claim no easy victories. Unquote. P A I G C, 1965. The history of our national liberation struggle is one of the most important factors upon which the political parties, the oppressed masses, and the liberation armed forces may understand the nature of their oppression and the task before them towards independence and freedom. In this article, I would like to present to the masses the general history of the, go- of the, evol- of the evolvement of the Black Liberation Army. This will be a brief historical overview, not providing specific historical data in order to protect people who are either functioning in the BLA or in other areas no longer associated with the BLA. The Black Liberation Army is a politico-military organization whose primary objective is to fight for the independence and self-determination of African people in the United States. The political determination of the BLA evolved out of the now-defunct Black Panther Party. It was in October 1966, with the advent of the Black Panther Party for self-defense, that the question of armed struggle and resistance to racist oppression emerge as a plausible strategic maneuver in the developing liberation movement. It was in late 1968, early 1969, that the former, I'm, I'm sorry, that the forming of a black underground first begun. From Los Angeles, California, to Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama, armed units were formed in rural areas, trained and caches were established uh, trained and caches were established in Oakland, San Francisco, Detroit, Chicago, Philadelphia, Ohio, and New York. Black Panther Party of, uh, offices were established to formulate a political relationship with the oppressed black masses in these and other communities across the country. From 1969 to 1972, the BPP came under vicious attack by the state and federal government. The government employed uh, COINTELPRO, parentheses, FBI, CIA, and local police departments, on parentheses, as the means to destroy the above-ground political apparatus that fielded the black underground. But it wasn't until 1970 that the BPP began its purge of many of its own trusted and militant members, many of which eventually joined the black underground. By 1971, contradictions perpetuated by COINTELPRO forces in the leadership of the BPP caused the split between Newton and Cleaver, which eventually split the entire Black Panther Party into two major factions. It was this BPP split and factionalism that determined the fielding of the Black Underground would begin to serve its primary purpose, parentheses, along with conditions presented by the state-armed offensive to liquidate the party, on parentheses, This is not to say that armed action against the state did not occur by the black underground prior to the split. On the the contrary, by 1971, the black underground was becoming rich in experience in the tactics of armed exportations, I'm sorry, expropriations, sabotage, and ambush assaults. It needs to be said that prior to the split, the Black Underground was the official armed wing of the above-ground political apparatus, and thereby had to maintain restraint in its military activity. This was very well for the Black Underground, although in many areas experienced in tactical military guerrilla warfare, was still infantile politically and although becoming organizationally wielded as a fighting apparatus, it did not establish an infrastructure completely autonomous 
from the above-ground BPP cadres and party chapters. This in turn became, I'm sorry, this in turn become, become, become one of the major uh, detriments of the Black Underground after the split of the Black Panther Party. Based upon split and factionalism in the BPP and heightened, rep- uh, and heightened repression by the state, the Black Underground was ordered to begin establishing the capacity to take the, quote, defensive offensive, unquote, in developing urban guerrilla warfare. Hence, in 1971, the name Black Liberation Army, parentheses, or Afro-American Liberation Army, parentheses, surfaced as the nucleus of black guerrilla fighters across the United States. This is not to say that the name Black Liberation Army was first used in 1971, for in late 1968, during a student strike and demonstration in Mexico City, students and demonstrators were killed by Mexican police. One of those students was reported to have had a piece of paper in his pocket upon which was written the name Black Liberation Army. Whether or not there was a connection to the fielding of the Black Underground with the uprising in Mexico in 1968 is unknown. Since the split of the BPP and the call of the, quote, defensive offensive, unquote, commenced, the Black Underground, which in May of 1971 borne the name Black Liberation Army, had committed many armed attacks against the state as part of the BPP, parentheses, and after the split, on parentheses, many of which are unrecorded. Here, I would like to present the Justice Department LEAA Task Force report on BLA activity. Quote, it should be noted these reports were recorded by the state according to when they captured, killed, or in some way received information concerning BLA activity, and therefore one-sided and by no means indicated all BLA activity in the last 10 years, on parentheses. 1970, October 22, San Francisco, California, an an inter, I'm sorry, an an anti-personnel time bomb explodes outside a church, showering steel shrapnel on mourners of a patrolman slain in a bank holdup. No one is injured. The BLA is suspected. 1971, January 13, Hunters Point, California, a police officer is shot by BLA member. January 19, San Francisco, California, two police officers are wounded by BLA members. March 30th, San Francisco, California, there is a BLA attempt to bomb a police station. May 19th, New York City, two black men lure, lure, lure patrolmen, Curry and Benetti by driving the wrong way and ignoring a traffic light. When apprehended, the driver the, the driver drops down and the passenger fires a machine gun at the doors and windows of the patrol car. The Black Liberation Army is suspected. May 21, Harlem, New York City. Patrolman Pia Gentini and Waverly Jones are killed in an ambush by alleged members of the BLA. June 5, New York City. Four men associated with the Black Liberation Army attempt to hold up a nightclub called the Tribal O. One cab driver is killed. June 18, New York City. BLA members rob a bank for funds. August. 20 BLA members leave New York City and rent a farmhouse in Fayetteville, Georgia, where they conduct a guerrilla warfare school for one month, during which they hold up a bank and kill an Atlanta policeman. August 23, Queens, New York. The Bankers Trust Company is robbed. Black Liberation Army members are identified as participants. August 28, San Francisco, California. Two BLA members attempt to machine gun a San Francisco Police Department patrol car. After an exchange of gunfire, they are apprehended. 
The service revolver of slain New York City patrolman Waverly Jones is found in their possession. August 29, San Francisco, California. A police surgeon is killed at his desk when two black men fire repeated blasts into the Ingleside police station. The BLA is suspected. October 7, Atlanta, Georgia. The Peters Street branch of Fulton National Bank is robbed, reportedly by the Black Liberation Army. November 3, Atlanta, Georgia. <clears throat> Officer James Richard Green is shot in a paddy wagon. The scene of the shooting is three miles from a residence used by the Black Liberation Army. This organization believed responsible for the shooting. December 12, Atlanta, Georgia. Three reported Black Liberation Army members and two other prisoners escape from the DeKalb County Jail. December 21, Atlanta, Georgia. New York City. Two police officers notice a suspicious car near Bankers Trust Company in Queens. When they approach the car, it speeds away and individuals in the car roll a grenade towards the police car. The grenade explodes, causing considerable damage towards the police car and injuring the policemen. Two suspects are identified as Black Liberation Army members. December 31, Brooklyn, New York. BLA members uh, engage in a shootout with a rival group in the offices of Youth in Action. Odessa, Florida. BLA member is killed in a shootout with FBI. 1972. January 12, Houston, Texas. Members of the BLA are charged with shooting and wounding of off-duty housing police detectives. January 19, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Two BLA members are arrested with two suitcases containing guns. January 27, New York City. In the morning, two patrolmen notice a car going through two red lights. When they approach to ask for a driver's license, the driver, the driver starts shooting. One patrolman is seriously wounded. In the evening, two policemen, Gregory Foster and, Ro and Rocco Lari, are shot in the back by at, least three, by at least three persons. Four suspects in the case are members of the Black Liberation Army. One suspect is later killed in a street battle with St. Louis <clears throat> excuse me, with St. Louis police. The recovered pistol matches Lori's. February 16, St. Louis, Missouri. A Black Liberation Army member tied to shooting of Foster and Lori is killed in a gun battle with police. Two others are arrested. May 10, Columbia, South Carolina. Four BLA members arrested with guns. August 8, Newark, New Jersey. BLA member who escapes after shooting sergeant and patrolman on April 19, 1971, is captured. September 9th, Brooklyn, New York. Three, three BLA members, including one who escaped from DeKalb County Jail, Georgia, are arrested. October 7, Los Angeles, California. Police car bombing claimed by Afro-American Liberation Army. December 28, Brooklyn, New York. An owner of a bar is kidnapped by BLA and held for $20,000 ransom. 1973, January 2, Brooklyn, New York. During the robbery of a social club, BLA members shoot and kill a victim. January 10, Brooklyn, New York. After being confronted on a subway station by patrolman, a BLA member fires a shot and escapes into the tunnel. January 12, Brooklyn, New York. Two housing detectives are shot in front of a bar after stopping two BLA members. January 23, Brooklyn, New York. Two wanted BLA members are shot and killed by members of New York City Police Department after they are trapped in a bar. Two detectives are wounded. January 25, Brooklyn, New York. Two patrolmen brothers assigned to assigned to same car, are machine-gunned by the BLA. January 28, Queens, New York. Two patrolmen 
on patrol are machine gunned by BLA members who escape. February 9, Bronx, New York. Members of the Black Liberation Army robbed a bank. February 23, Brooklyn, New York. Two BLA members are arrested with a carload of explosives. March 2, Brooklyn, New York. A group of BLA members stopped by officers looking for a robbery suspect engages and I'm sorry, suspect engage suspect engages the officers in a gun battle. March 6, Bronx, New York. Three BLA members are recognized by two detectives and engage them in a gun battle. BLA members are joined by two more and escape by stealing a car and machine gunning a police radio car. March 27, Brooklyn, New York. BLA members rob a supermarket. April 10, Queens, New York. BLA members rob a bank. April 12, Brooklyn, New York. Two telephone company men are held at are held at gunpoint by the BLA when they are suspected of being police. They are told that they would be killed if they have guns, radios, or shields. May 2, New Jersey Turnpike. Members of the BLA are arrested after a shootout. One state patrolman is killed, one is wounded, one BLA member dies, and one escapes, but is subsequently captured in East Brunswick, New Jersey. May 19, Mount Vernon, New York. Two policemen are shot when they stop three BLA members pulling a stick-up. June 5, New York City. A transit detective is killed when he stops two BLA members from entering without paying. Before he dies, he shoots both of them. One is captured, and the other escapes. June 7, Brooklyn, New York. A BLA member is captured by New York City police and FBI. June 8, Brooklyn, New York. Two other BLA members are captured. July 18, Bronx, New York. BLA members rob a bank. September 2, New Orleans, Louisiana. Members of New York City Police Department, New Orleans Police Department, and FBI capture a BLA member. September 27, New York City. BLA member is charged with the murder of patrolman Foster and Laurie. He escapes from King's County Hospital, but is captured on October 3. November 7, New York City. BLA member is arrested as he attempts to turn himself in for being absent from the army. November 14, Bronx, New York. Members of the Black Liberation Army are slain after three years of pursuit by police. This is the seventh BLA member to die in police shootout. 18 others have been arrested. December 27, New York City. Three BLA sympathizers are caught attempting to, to free BLA members from the, t- from the tombs when police see one of them emerging from a sewer manhole two blocks away outside the corrections department design and engineer i'm sorry design and engineering unit that house blueprints 1974 april 17 new york city the tombs for bla sympathizers armed with two handguns and Acet, um, acetylene torch attempt to free three BLA members. They flee when the torch runs out of fuel. May 3, New York City. After failing to release prisoners at the tombs, BLA members flee to New Haven, Connecticut, where they rob a bank and shoot a policeman. Three are captured, others escape. June 2, New York City. BLA members attempt to shoot two policemen on the Delaware Bridge and are arrested. They have a large supply of guns. August 5, Brooklyn, New York. A woman is arrested after attempting to smuggle hacksaw blades to BLA prisoners. August 15, Brooklyn, New York. One BLA member escapes, one is shot, and a third gives up after an escape attempt. The escapee is captured a few blocks away. October 20, Connecticut State Prison. A white woman is arrested trying to smuggle a gun to BLA prisoners. 1975, February 17, 
Rikers Island, New York, BLA members subdued by guards after getting the keys, parentheses, with a wooden knife as a weapon, unparentheses, from a guard. Police receive a telephone call soon after the incident saying that five men armed with shotguns, one is wetsuit, I'm sorry, one in wetsuit, are setting off in three rafts. One raft is found with a map, a set of oars, swim fins, three 38 caliber bullets, and 9 millimeter bullets. May 25, Brooklyn, New York. A Black Liberation Army member falls to his death in an escape attempt. A second member is recaptured near the prison. Two other BLA members return to their cells after the one fell. 1976. January 19, Trenton, New Jersey. At Trenton State Prison, there is an 11 there is an 11-hour shooting rampage. An inmate was killed in the opening exchange of gunfire, who was one I'm sorry, who was the one who began the incident by shooting a guard in an escape attempt. Another inmate who instigated the incident was convicted of murdering a state trooper in a shootout between BLA members and police in the New Jersey Turnpike. Inmates threw a homemade grenade at police and guards as they rescued a wounded guard. The names of comrades mentioned in these police reports have been, have been, have been omitted, as some are no longer functioning in the same capacity, imprisoned or dead. It is, our pol- it, was, it is our policy not to reveal the names of comrades who have acted within our organizational underground formations. The offensive, I'm sorry, the defensive offensive launched in 1970 to 71 political military initiatives was based upon the degree of repression suffered in the black community due to COINTELPRO police attacks. The political military police at the time was to establish a defensive self-defense front that that would offensively protect the interest of the above-ground political apparatuses uh, aspiration to develop a mass movement towards national liberation. Again, it must be stated that in the early 70s, the Black Underground was the armed wing of the above-ground BPP, which, because of the split and factionalism, prevented adequate logistics, communications between cadres, and focus in the Black Underground in various parts of the country. It was this situation which caused the greatest problem to the advent of the Black Liberation Army, upon which the commencement of armed struggle could be said to have been premature. Premature in the sense that subject, that subjectively our capacity to wage a sustained uh, protracted national liberation war was not possible due to the split in the above-ground political apparatus, with the black underground still depending on the above-ground for logistics and communications, and the black underground comprising of militants who had not grown to political maturity, and without a political military structure and strategy to merge the black underground into a national formation, employing both stable and mobile urban and rural guerrilla warfare. In conjunction with the rising militancy of the oppressed masses, in the same regards, the objective reality for armed struggle was present that being a historical transition evolving from the civil rights movement, the riotous 1960s, the creation of the BPP chapters in black communi- in black communities across the across the country, which fought bravely against police attacks. The mass mobilization in support of the Vietnamese National Liberation War, etc. Hence, the commencement of armed struggle by our forces was according to the development of history. By late 1971, it was ordered for the Black Underground to enter a, a strategic 
retreat to recognize itself and build a national structure, but the call for the strategic retreat for many cadres was too late. Many of, many of the most mature militants were already deeply underground, separated from those functioning within the logistics provided by BPP chapters, who in the split served to support armed struggle. The repression by the state continued to mount, especially now that the black underground was hampered by internal strife with the loss of the above ground political support apparatus, parentheses, with virtually no support coming from existing black community groups and organizations, on parentheses. It should be stated a major contradiction was devolving between the black underground and those Euro American forces who were employing armed tactics in support of Vietnamese liberation struggle. By 1973 through 75, this contradiction became full blown, whereby specific Euro American revolutionary armed forces refused to give meaningful material and political support to the Black Liberation Movement, more specifically to the Black Liberation Army. Thereby, in 1974, the Black Liberation Army was without any above-ground political support apparatus, logistically and structurally scattered across the country without the means to, to unite its combat units, abandoned by Euro-American revolutionary armed forces, and being relentlessly pursued by the state reactionary forces, COINTELPRO, FBI, CIA, and local police departments. Thusly, it was only a matter of time before the Black Liberation Army would be virtually uh, decimated as a fighting clandestine organization. By 1974 through 75, the fighting capacity of the Black Liberation Army had been destroyed, but the BLA as a politico-military organization had not been destroyed, since those imprisoned continued escape attempts and fought political trials, which forged ide- which forged ideological and political theory concerning the building of the Black Liberation Movement and revolutionary armed struggle. The trials of Black Liberation Army members sought to place the state on trial to condemn the oppressive conditions from which black people had to make out an existence in racist, Amer- in racist America. These trials went on for several years, which the courts and police used to embellish their position on being guardians of society. The state media publications projected the Black Liberation Army trials as justice being served to protect black people from terrorism. To prevent these terrorists from starting racial strife between black and white people, and to protect the interest in lives of police who are responsible for the welfare of the oppressed communities, etc. The captured and confined BLA member was deemed a terrorist, a criminal, a racist, but never a revolutionary, never a humanitarian, never a political activist, but the undaunted revolutionary fervor of captured of captured BLA members continued to serve the revolution even while imprisoned. By placing the state on trial, the BLA was more able to expose the contradictions between the philosophy of the state to protect the rights of all people and the actions of the state which are to only protect the rights of the capitalist class bourgeoisie. The BLA trials sought to undermine the state attempts to play off the BLA as an insignificant group of crazies, and therefore the trials of BLA members became forums to politicize the masses of what the struggle and revolution is all about. The trials served to organize to organize people to support those being persecuted and prosecuted by the state as a means from which the oppressed masses would be able to protect themselves from, from, uh, from future persecution. In this manner, 
the trials of the Black Liberation Army voiced the discontent, dissatisfaction, and disenfranchisement of black people in racist America. By late 1975, the Black Liberation Army established a coordinating committee, which essentially was comprised of imprisoned members and outside supporters gained during the years of political prosecution in the courts. The first task of the coordinating committee was to distribute an ideological and political document depicting the theoretical foundations of the political determination of the Black Liberation Army. This document was entitled, quote, A Message to the Black Movement, a Political Statement from the Black Underground, unquote. The message to the Black Movement put forth several political premises from which the BLA should be noted as a revolutionary politico-military organization fighting for national liberation of African people in the United States. In late 1975 and 1976, the the Coordinating Committee distributed the first BLA newsletter, an um, an organizational publication for the purpose of forging ideological and political clarity and unity between BLA members captured and confined in various parts of the of the country the BLA newsletter begun to serve as a means from which BLA members would voice their political understanding of the national liberation struggle and in this way for the entire organi- for the entire organized body to share in ideas and strengthen our collective political determination as a fighting force. Over the years, the newsletter has served to help develop cadres inside and outside of prisons and broaden the capacity from which the BLA could continue to serve the national liberation struggle. Also, in 1976, members of the Black Liberation Army launched a national campaign to petition the United Nations concerning the plight of political prisoners of war and condition I'm sorry and conditions of the US penal system on behalf of the prison movement the UN prisoners petition campaign initiated the uh, I'm sorry <clears throat> initiated and directed by members of the BLA virtually revitalized the prison movement across the country and forged an impetus to the um, to the present human rights campaign to the United Nations. It was the UN prisoners' petition campaign that first called for an international investigation onto the conditions of U.S. prisons, and called for the release of political prisoners of war to a non-imperialist country that would accept them. Consequently, this year. Another national campaign has been launched entitled, quote, National POW Amnesty Campaign, unquote. Lastly, in 1976 through 77, the Coordinating Committee distributed what had been termed a study guide to captured, uh, sorry, to, to captured members of the BLA as a means to consolidate the ideological perspectives from which the BLA would provide political leadership to the national liberation struggle. Since 1974 to the present, the BLA have consequently provided ideological and political perspectives within the black liberation movement, and in this way have, I'm sorry, and in this way gave leadership to the movement, although the black liberation army is still lacking principled support by, prog- by progressive forces throughout the country. The primary aspect of lack of support in the fact the BLA still calls for the need of armed struggle and the building of a revolutionary armed front. The Black Liberation Army is a politico-military organi- um, sorry, is, an, is a politico-military organization which in the last five years has served to develop the political mass movement to merge with the political determination of the Black Underground. The merger is upon the development of a national politico-military strategy in unity with the aspirations and strategic 
initiatives of the various progressive political organizations throughout the country. Consistently, the Black Liberation Army has called for the development of the Black Liberation Front or Black United Front and United Front of Black Revolutionary Nationalists, establishing the political determination of the class and national liberation struggle towards independence, and for the freeing of the land. At this stage in the struggle, there are several areas of progress being formulated that may serve to strengthen, consolidate, and mobilize the national liberation struggle under the aspirations of the oppressed black masses. The building of the African National Prisoners Organization is a positive step on which various progressive black forces can develop principled working relationships alliances, and coalitions, and further build towards the Black Liberation Front. In the same regards, the development of the National Black Human Rights Coalition provides a means from which a greater number of black organizations and groups representing oppressed black masses can be educated, organized, and mobilized to confront racist, capitalist imperialism in conjunction with the heightened struggles in Namibia, and Azania, and human right violations here in North America. But it is imperative that these new formations develop a struggle line that supports the need for armed struggle to be waged in the United States, and therefore support of the oldest revolutionary armed force in North America, the Black Liberation Army. It is practically 1980 and the Black Liberation Army, the Black Underground, have been in existence for over 10 years. The last 10 years have been hard years of struggle. We have lost many comrades, we have made many mistakes, but we have never lied nor compromised our principles in struggle. The growth and development of the BLA depends on the growth and development of the entire class and national liberation struggle. The means from which the BLA can build revolutionary armed struggle is based upon the willingness of the oppressed masses to support the BLA, to call for the BLA to act, to build areas of support in the workplace, in the home, and the, so and the social places of entertainment, but most of all amongst the political organizations and groups that the oppressed masses are affiliated with. It is essential and necessary that the general mass and popular movement understand the need for revolutionary armed struggle slash forces to exist, and that the existence of the Black Liberation Army is the criteria on which the class and national liberation struggle will be preserved, as the socioeconomic conditions of U.S. monopoly capitalism worsen and as racist repression intensifies. As mentioned earlier, another national political campaign has been launched, this new campaign calling for the release and or exchange of captured members of the Black Underground and other revolutionary forces across the country. But it must be understood, the principal objective of this campaign is to also build support of revolutionary armed struggle, employing international law and politics specifically protocols of the Geneva Accords concerning the existence of political prisoners of war in the United States, thereby supporting the release of political prisoners of war brings understanding to how these revolutionaries came to be imprisoned and the need for them to be released, as well as the need for revolutionary armed struggle. This is the challenge in uniting the mass and, popu and popular movement under the auspicious, I'm sorry, under the um, aus auspices of building the Black Liberation Front and can only be objectively released, I'm sorry, can only be objectively realized by supporting the re emergence of the Black Underground, the Black Liberation Army. Support the Black Liberation Army. Build the National POW Amnesty Campaign. Free all political prisoners of war. Jalil Abdul Muntakim on behalf of the Black Liberation Army. Addendum. 
since the original writing of this brief historical account of the BPP-BLA, Asada Shakur was liberated and BLA soldiers were captured during Nayak Brink's armored car expropriation. Originally written on September 18, 1979, and printed in Arm the Spirit, the first National Revolutionary Prisoners newspaper. About the author, Anthony Bottom slash Jalil A. Muntakim was born October 18, 1951, in Oakland, California, the first of four children in his family. His early years were spent in San Francisco. In his junior high school years, he obtained a summer scholarship to attend an advanced college math and engineering program. During the Civil Rights Movement, he participated in NAACP youth, organiz- youth organizing and was one of many who engaged in street riots against racism and police brutality in San Francisco. In high school, he became a leading member of the Black Student Union. Because of his ability to articulate the issues that confronted black students, Jalil often uh, toured San Jose, California, in what was called, quote, speak out, unquote, with the BSU chairman of San Jose State and City College. He had become a member of the, quote, House of Umoje, unquote, a cultural nationalist affiliate of Ron Karinga's United Slaves Organization. At the age of 16 and a half, on April 6, 1968, two nights after the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr., the BSU chair of San Jose State and City College, Jalil, and a couple of high school students were arrested in a car and charged with possession of high-powered rifles and Molotov cocktails. Black high school students picketed and demonstrated in front of San Jose City Hall, demanding their release from detention. After the assassination of Reverend King, Jalil began to believe a a more militant response to national oppression and racism was necessary, and began to look towards the Black Panther Party for self-defense for leadership. He became affiliated with the BPP when he was 18 years old. Having moved, having moved back to San Francisco from Jose, I'm, I'm sorry, from San Jose, Jalil was recruited into the Black Underground by elementary school friends, who had since become Panthers. Less than two months from his 20th birthday, on August 28, 1971, Jalil was captured along with Albert No Washington in a midnight shootout with San Francisco police. It had been alleged that Jalil and No attempted to assassinate a SF police sergeant in retaliation for the August 21, 1971 assassination of BPP, Field Marshal George Jackson. (laughs) Subsequently, Jalil was charged with a host of revolutionary underground activities, including the assassination of including the assassination of NYC police officers for which he is currently serving a life sentence. When he was arrested in 1971, he was a high school graduate and employed as a social worker for the California State Employment Office. Having been in prison since 1971, Noah and Jalil are two of the ten longest-held black political prisoners in the world. While imprisoned in San Quentin in 1975 through 77, Jalil was able to organize the first national prison petition campaign to the United Nations. He established the first revolutionary prisoners uh, national newspaper called, quote, Arm the Spirit, unquote. The organized, I'm sorry, and organized the first black August demonstration in front of San Quentin. From his prison from his prison cell, Jalil was the support I'm sorry, Jalil with the support of another BLA prisoner of war, Sundiata Akoli, organized the first march of the United Nations calling for recognition 
of U.S. political prisoners, as well as the first demonstration in front of the Harlem State Office Building calling for recognition of U.S. political prisoners. Also since being in New York State prisons, Jalil wrote and submitted a legislative bill for prisoners with with life sentences to receive good time off their off their minimum sentences. I'm not too sure what was going on there, but I had to uh, mute my speakers. Okay. This bill was introduced to the New York State Assembly Committee on Corrections. Jalil has filed numerous lawsuits on behalf of prisoners, civil and human rights, challenging the prison system's way of doing business. In addition, he has received awards of appreciation from JC's NAACP and Project Build Prison Chapters for his active participation and leadership. After many years of being denied the opportunity to attend college because he has been designated a Central Minority Case, or CMC, security classification in 1994, Jalil graduated from Sunny New uh, Paltz with a BS in Psychology and a BA in Sociology. He is a founding member of the New African Liberation Front, or NALF, and, pre- and presently working to develop a National Prisoners African Studies Project, or NPASP. Recently, he initiated the international mobilization, quote, Spring Break 98, Jericho March on the White House and U.S. embassies to demand amnesty for U.S. political prisoners, unquote. Over the years, he has written several political booklets and essays, an an unpublished novel and teleplay. Jalil has a daughter and granddaughter. He states, quote, I am to prison an expectant father and will leave prison a grandfather, unquote. Jalil will not appear before the parole board in New York State until the year, t- uh, until the year 2002. He also states, quote, the United States does not recognize the existence of political prisoners. To do so would give credence to the fact of the level of repression and oppression and oppression that exists in the United States and have to recognize the fact that people resist racist oppression of the US and therefore legitimize the existence if not only the individuals who are incarcerated or have been captured but also legitimize those movements of which they are a part unquote prisoners of war This is only a partial listing as of January 2002. Abdul Majid, parentheses, A. Laborde, unparentheses, 83A0483 slash box 700, Wallkill, New York, 12589. Anthony Bottom, parentheses, Jalil A. Muntakim, unparentheses, 77A4283 slash box 618, Auburn, New York, 13024. Bashir Hamid, parentheses, J. York, unparentheses, 82A6313 slash box 149, Attica, New York, 14011 dash 0149. Herman Bell, 79C0262 slash CCF main slash box 2001 Danamora, New York 12929-2001 Matulu Shakur 83205-012 slash box PMB slash D Unit 105, Atlanta, Georgia 30315. Robert Seth Hayes 74A22 
80 slash box 2001, Denimora, New York, 12929-2001. Russell Schautz, or Schautz, um, AF3855SCI Green, 1040 East Roy Furman Highway, Waynesburg, Pennsylvania, 15370, um, through 8,090. Seko Sinke, T.M. Comboy, parentheses, William Turk, um, hashtag 113058, on parentheses, P.O. Box 10, parentheses, 6A through 100, on parentheses, Clio, Alabama, 36017, through zero zero ten Seco Odinga zero five two two eight through zero five four thirty nine oh one Clen Boulevard uh Lumpoc California nine three four three six Sundiata Acoli parentheses C Squire on parentheses three nine seven nine four dash zero six six slash box 3000 white deer pennsylvania 17887 support organizations partial listing anarchist black cross federation parentheses abcf on parentheses box 350392 jacksonville florida 32235 marshall e conway support committee p.o box 41144 Baltimore, Maryland, 21203-6144. National Plebiscite Education, Campaign for Self-Determination, P.O. Box 3585, Oakland, California, 94609. New African Liberation Front, parentheses, N-A-L-F, on parentheses, P.O. Box 340084. Jamaica, New York, 11434. New African Network in Defense of Political Prisoners of POWs. I'm sorry, Prisoners and POWs. P.O. Box 90604, Washington, D.C., 20090. Sundiata Akoli Freedom Campaign, P.O. Box 5538, Harlem, New York, 10027. And that is the end of the audiobook. This was certainly a bit different, and um, obviously this was, you know, mostly very American compared to a lot of my previous readings, which are mostly European authors and, you know, European uh, affairs and politics and so forth. I want to go ahead and thank everyone for, of course, bearing again with my slow reading and mispronunciations. If I butchered any words, I'm sure I butchered a few, and if so, I'm sorry for that. Apologize for that. And um, again, like I've said in the beginning, uh, I would appreciate that a lot if you could hit that like and or subscribe button as I will be doing more of these radical readings in the future. That's what I made this channel for. I'm also going to be doing uh, some meetings with my political party, the Working Class Party of Maryland, as I I am a Maryland resident. I live in Baltimore, Maryland. Just want to throw that out there. Uh, So I'm going to be doing some videos of those in the future too. Um, And I will see everyone in the next one. Bye, everyone.